Did you know you can style that placeholder text in input forms? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use some basic CSS to apply custom styles not only to the text in your input fields, but also those input fields that have placeholder text. Hey everybody, Chris Love, the owner of Love to Dev, and this video, I want to show you how you can customize the style of the placeholder text in HTML input fields using just CSS. And we'll also look at how we can apply uh, styles specifically to input boxes that do have dis uh, placeholder text displayed. So without further ado, let's just uh, review what we've got going on here. This is a very uh, simple code demo uh, for this one. Uh, what I've done is I've just created a, a real simple form here and just stacked a bunch of divs to display uh, different input fields. And um, the one difference that I did is uh, sort of borrowed the uh, some of the, the, the font color uh, classes or yeah classes from uh, Bootstrap um, using the, the BEM uh, naming syntax here. In this case, I'm doing text and then primary. And if you don't know what BEM, BEM is, that stands for Block Element Modifier. So basically, you do your class names uh, so that they're descriptive of what they're trying to do. So here you can see it's text. And instead of saying uh, blue or red or something like that, which you could totally do, um, instead you give it a little more semantic meaning. Little tangent here to kind of explain what's going on, even with the bootstrap stuff, is they're trying to associate colors with information. And this is why uh, being able to style placeholder text could be a very valuable asset for your uh, web applications. And that's because you can convey meaning with the style of the text, in particular, in this case, color. Uh, but we'll also see that we can apply a few other things. Now, remember, placeholder is text. So when you apply, ah, hit the wrong button. So when you apply the styles, they're going to be uh, text-based styles uh, to uh, the actual stuff. And uh, so we'll, but then we'll look and see how we can do the actual input field just itself. So what I've done is I've created uh, four different ones to apply basically different colors. So we've got primary, we have danger, success, and warning. And then I tried to put, uh, I originally tried to put some uh, colors here, but I also cha I changed this so I could do a little uh, hero screenshot image uh, a little bit uh, for the actual blog post and the thumbnail for this YouTube video, so that's why the text doesn't echo out the color. Now, I would walk you through seeing how this is applied in the developer tools normally in the browser developer tools, but unfortunately, they don't really provide any value. So with that said, this is, these are, this is our form loaded. So you can see we've got blue, red, green, and yellow, even though I did change that to purple. I wonder if I haven't reloaded there there we go yellow I noticed that typo uh, last night as I was looking at the blog post I was like oh anyway so um, I have changed like normally the default is going to be like a uh, kind of a, a grayish color uh, so that it, basically what they're trying to convey with that by default is that it's not the actual text it's more like an instruction if you're not familiar with placeholder in input fields they're great to provide kind of instruction, sometimes even label to the field. Uh, you can also like maybe display a format, like a phone number format you're expecting, those kind of things. But as soon as you start typing, the placeholder text goes away. And as long as there's no actual value in the input field, the placeholder text will show uh, in its place, hence placeholder. Now, normally, like I said, it's just going to be black, um, kind of off black, whatever. But I have styled this. And I also made everything uppercase, if you noticed. And I made the font size a little bit bigger than the default. And just to show that you can apply different styles. Obviously, the way you want to style it may vary. Uh, but like I said, the colors can convey different meanings um, and things like that. So you've got a lot of options here. 
but like I said, when you go inspect the element, um, I don't have the ability to see the actual placeholder thing. It is a pseudo element, and if you followed along in the CSS shapes and also in the um, uh, the um, the background the big background hero image video that I've recently posted, uh, we use pseudo elements to do some styling there. But unfortunately, that's not available for us here, at least in the Chrome Developer Tools. Um, so yeah, we don't really have access to see it there. So that's kind of a bummer. But uh, the page, as usual, it's available on the Love to Dev Samples. Uh, GitHub, which I've got the link in the description below, and it is under, um, under. let me just pop that up, you can see it's under the CSS folder, and then there is a placeholder-color folder, which is where this particular file is. Now, I was going to page on up here, and just got my, uh, you know, our basic little initial uh, reset, so to speak, and that, that would allow me to effectively kind of uh, center our uh, our kind of faux dialogue, if you will, for our form uh, on the on the screen. Uh, just some basic styling being applied to the input box uh, or for the layout for that. No big deal there. Uh, same for the, the form wrapper. Again, just nothing to do with the core context of this. But here's where things get fun. Okay. Now, if we saw before, I applied the different... Uh, kind of semantic meaning classes to it. So this is the this is going to be the root of our selector. So I applied this to the div wrapper around the element rather than on the element itself. And I did that specifically because I wanted the option because uh, the way I would do this in normal life is I would do it there because I want the option say if um, there's like an, a label accompanying it with it or maybe some other elements to uh, add value to the form uh, that I can kind of put this semantic meaning at that level and that can drive uh, some other visual cues as well. I just think that's a good practice. Then I put uh, I put the input selector. I think in this case it's probably optional so it may be a little technically over specified by doing that and that's because here we have the uh, pseudo selector placeholder which would only work with an input or a text area element by the way you can do this also with a text area or and I, I just didn't get it I didn't think about doing that till later but you can totally do this with a text element and this is one of the variations okay now I'm gonna page down to get you to what should be the the quote standard I do want to mention that uh, the the this the pseudo element for placeholder here and what I'm going to show you later on to do the uh, just the input field itself are both technically non-standard uh, things right now that means that uh, they haven't been uh, like approved or recommended by say the W3C working group as something for browsers to implement however most browsers have implemented some form of it but unfortunately this uh, this standard, quote unquote, has kind of lagged, I guess, lagged behind. I don't follow the CSS standard process as much as I do um, like actual API stuff. Uh, so I'm not totally sure where it is or what's hanging this one particular up from being implemented. But most browsers do support this placeholder pseudo element. Now, in the past, you did have to vendor prefix it. And that's why I went ahead and put all these vendor prefixed versions here. And you'll see some um, with the double quote and some with, uh, not the double quote, this is actually a duplicate one. Oh. No, no, moment. sorry, there's the, there's the, du the, not the, I said double quote, I meant double colon. Sorry, I was up late last night. Okay, uh, but you can see I've got all those. Now, normally, I would stack the selectors and make one rule, but this is what I found. When I did that, no browser recognized the rule. And I was like, what? Because <laughs> normally you can stack them. I could just say put a comma here, and then, you know, I could literally just do this. That's normally what you would do. Wait a minute, I, did, I selected the whole thing, sorry. Let's do that again. Doop. There we go. All right. You would normally do that. But I found when I did that, it just didn't get recognized by anybody. But when I separated them out into individual rules, uh, then suddenly my styling appeared in all the browsers. And I did test in Chrome, 
uh, Edge and Firefox. Uh, I probably should have tested Opera and some other things, but it's not a here nor there. I think it I think it kind of proved the point on this. Um, I believe you can even get support through this in um, Internet Explorer, uh, but uh, you know, as with all things IE, you should stop worrying about that because it's being deprecated very soon, completely off the face of the map. Anyway, so anyway, uh, I actually pulled the colors out of Bootstrap and dropped those in here to match up. As you can see, I've got the blue, red, green, and yellow colors. I also bumped the font size up to 1.3 and gave it a line height of 1.3 just for good measure. And then I did a text transform to make it uppercase, all to show you that you can apply pretty much any text-based styling uh, rule uh, to this placeholder text, and it should get um, uh, applied for us. Alrighty, so with that, that's that's how it works. That's that's all there is to it, uh, to, be, to be blunt. Um, and you can see that it gets applied. Okay, so now for the next thing. Um, this is uh, an element that doesn't have a placeholder in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how we can style the elements that do have the uh, have a placeholder visibly displayed. We can style the actual input field differently. And in this case, I'm going to put a, uh, a purple border around the uh, the uh, input field and if the uh, the text in the placeholder is too long we're going to truncate it with an ellipsis so what I'm going to do is we are just going to put some random text in this particular one that one should definitely overflow now if I reload doo -doo -doo, boom you can see now we have a purple border around it which Honestly, this is ugly, but it proves our point. And on our second one that had all the little garbage text appended out that would have gone over, um, the, uh, the CSS intelligently truncates the text, but doesn't leave us hanging. It actually um, uh, uses that ellipsis so that it doesn't look ugly like this. That It just looks sort of unprofessional. And if I can get it to move. Oh, you know what? It's not going to move. <laughs> because you can't uh, move your carrot, your carrot through placeholder text. Uh, that's another little tidbit to know about placeholder text. So if you got really long placeholder text, probably not even that useful to begin with, <laughs> as far as the last part of it. So, but anyway, but notice this one doesn't have any um, placeholder, and so the purple border wasn't applied to it. Now, how did we do that? All right, as you saw, I. Uh, I uncommented it out this and the pseudo selector to do the, uh, the the styling on an input field where a placeholder is being displayed is a another pseudo selector. It's a single colon and it's just placeholder dash shown and that just means that the placeholder text is shown. Apply this style to this particular input box. So you can see between the placeholder shown and the placeholder pseudo selectors, you've got uh, different options uh, to really customize a lot of things about uh, your input forms so that you can make your forms hopefully more usable. And that's really a big goal of designing forms. And there is a true art to designing forms uh, to make them easier to use, easier to read, and ultimately uh, make it so that the users uh, don't make errors entering data or you know, they get frustrated. I mean, who doesn't get frustrated filling out a form you don't understand? And so that's why placeholders are there. They can really help guide you, but uh, you can add more semantic meaning to them uh, so that your users feel a lot more comfortable filling out those forms. So I hope this has been really helpful for you. I know this is kind of a, you know, a neat little trick kind of thing. And like I said, it just takes CSS. Uh, it is technically a non-standard thing, but pretty much all the browsers support it in some form or fashion. Um, 
the uh, the colon colon placeholder is kind of the de facto standard for most modern browsers, so you should be pretty good there. But if you do need to do some legacy stuff, uh, look at the vendor prefix versions. And another note, you do have to create duplicate rules for all of these different things. At least that was my finding, and I tried it in all three of those browsers, and not a single one of them recognized until I split the rules up. So you can't rule um, or select or stack uh, for this particular trick. So if you got any questions or comments, leave those in the section below. And as always, uh, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you can not miss any of the next cool videos that I'm going to produce. And in the description below, there's also a link to an accompanying blog post. That way you've got both video and text that you can reference. And of course, share with your friends if you think this is cool. Thanks a lot. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to make some really awesome forms for your users.